Hey friends, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast with your host, Nicole and Hannah. Come join us for some hopeful conversations about heartful entertainment that makes your heart swing. Hey Hallmarkies, we are back for another episode. Hannah couldn't make it today, but we have a very special guest on the podcast, Dara from Dear Hallmark. Today we will be chatting about the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries original movie, Dying for Chocolate, A Curious Caterer Mystery, starring Andrew Walker as Tom Schultz, Nikki Deloach as Goldie Berry, J.C. Doten as Marla McGuire, Jason Schumming as Dr. Owen Gentle, Lachlan Monroe as Dr. Richard Corman, Riley Davis as Deputy Mason Kildea, Kendall Cross as Adele Dennison, Jason Tremblay as Archie Dennison, Antonio Kayon as Brad Bowman, Mesa Nicholson as Olive Corman, and Aaron Boys as Dr. Laura Smiley. It was directed by Anthony C. Mechie. The writers are Diane Mott Davidson who wrote the novel Catering to Nobody and Dying for Chocolate. The teleplay was written by John Christian Plummer and Aaron Dobson. Now, we all know John Christian Plummer, who is the writer of Mystery 101. Woo! Yes. Colorado caterer Goldie Berry teams with Detective Tom Schultz to identify the ingredients that led to the mysterious death of her friend and ends up discovering a hidden recipe for murder. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> My first question for you, Dara, is what did you like most about this movie? I liked seeing Andrew walker in a different role that we haven't seen him in yeah. before mm-hmm. i did too i appreciated the aggression for lack of a better word that he brought to the character of detective tom schultz yeah um and i want more of it i i want more of it and if yes. i could add just a second thing i loved the adult conversations that were had in this movie i love the the themes that were tackled mm-hmm. yeah. of grief, addiction, mm-hmm. mental health. Yeah. I really appreciated that because, and grief was touched on a little bit like in the Haley Dane mysteries. I mean, I'm yeah. sorry, Haley Dean mysteries. Yes. Um, because she was a therapist grieving mm-hmm. her fiance's murder. Yeah. But we haven't seen Haley Dean in a long time. So it's yeah. been a minute since we've seen the topic of grief tackled head on like this and I really appreciate it. What about yourself? What was something that you liked about the mystery? Seeing Andrew and Nikki together again because they are one of my favorite Hallmark pairings. Yeah, I know people were so, because this is their fourth movie, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they have a great chemistry. Yes. They already like, and they're really good friends. Yes, in real and I life, love that too. You know, so you can tell like they're super comfortable with each other. Yeah. So they already know what 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 the other can can bring to the table. So yes, that makes for good chemistry. Very yes. good chemistry. I agree, and we enjoyed having both of them on our podcast before this movie came out to talk about it. I remember that interview. That interview was so cool. That yes, we cool loved interview. it. It was a lot of fun. So anyone that hasn't listened to it, go check it out. It's on our YouTube channel. Guess we should just get right into it with our Let's suspects and clues. So the first suspect I have on my list is Adele Dennison. Mm. what are your thoughts on Adele 
Well, first, I just want to say she has some of the best hair in Hallmark <laughs> Mystery Land. Yeah. Her hair is always bone straight. There are never any flyaways anytime I see her. Because she's been in other mysteries in the mm -hmm. Hallmark, in yes. Hallmark universe. Mm -hmm. So it was lovely to see her face again. Yeah. Um, but she's always up to no good, I feel like. And even like her, like with the character she plays, let yeah. me be clear. I'm not I know what you mean. About that. Okay. I know what I you just, mean. Her characters always seem like you always second guess the characters that you're just like, something's off about them. And this one was no different. I was like, something's off about this, Adele. There's something. I, I felt like she was guarded in a sense, like she was hiding something. Yeah, I, I I didn't have her high on my list of suspects, but I didn't count her out either. I'll say that. Yeah. I mean, she had some moments where I was like, that's kind of suspicious. It's very suspicious. And we'll talk very. about that. Yeah. But I will make one exception for one of her roles. She was in another movie with Andrew recently, My Christmas Family Tree. No yes no yes no wait she, she played jane's tupper's character's wife oh my gosh well okay i'll amend my statement by saying when she does hallmark <laughs> mysteries when she does hallmark mysteries she's up to no good like her characters yeah. are up to no good yeah i didn't even make the well to my to my defense I was very new to Hallmark Mystery Land. At yeah. that point, I had only, I had only seen a few. I yeah. I had just started watching the mysteries, um, but oh my gosh, that's yeah. cool! Now yes. I gotta watch it again. <laughs> yes, that was one of my favorite Christmas movies from twenty twenty one. Yeah, for Hallmark. Yeah. Yeah. But a little bit about her: she is the president of the Booster Club at the school in elk park can we what is a booster club can we because i keep thinking about the shot that you get when you're a little kid like your booster shot like i need to know what a booster can, what is a booster club i could be getting part of this wrong but the booster club at a school i believe is the group that helps a lot with like the sporting events and other events at the school. And I might have to look it up. Um, okay, here we go. So a booster club is an organization at the high school or university level. The clubs are generally run and organized by the parents of the students in the supported organization in high schools and by athletic supporters and fans at colleges. It is not a social club. Its main function is to develop support for the student program and raise funds to supplement shrinking public support as a result of budget cuts. Okay. Okay. So it was like, I feel like it's a more organized, um, what's that? PTA. Like I feel like they're yeah. like like a higher like a not I don't want to say higher level but like another branch of like a PTA if you will. Yeah, at least at my high school, they help a lot with the football games and the basketball games and the volleyball games and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and I think they're also the ones, at least at my school, that are a big part of the merch if you will yeah or, uh, they're a big part of the selling of the merch like t-shirts and hats yeah and stuff like that so okay I because for the life of me I'm just sitting here like is it like a fancy frou-frou <laughs> hot like thing that happens in prep schools for the parent like is that like a prep school parent teacher so like that I had so many thoughts like I I just I had no idea but that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And they always do a great job, at least at my high school where I graduated from. So there you go. 
the first clue I have written down is her husband was rumored to be having an affair with Laura. That sounds like motive to me. And Laura is... Laura is Goldie's friend. Yeah. Yeah, I... Not gonna lie, I believed it. <laughs> I believed it for a little bit. Yeah. For a, that was the first thing that I carried with me through a little bit of the mystery. Yeah. And then, um, and then when another scenario happens, I don't know if you're gonna mention it. That's when I thought, oh, okay, something else. Um, yeah. Something else happened. So yeah. And we hear this when Tom or Detective Schultz is at Goldie's house for the first time. Yes. yes. And he's asking her questions and Goldie tells him that Adele and Archie left the luncheon hours before Laura was in the accident. So that kind of brings it back a little bit. Like mm-hmm. she's probably not, but then more things come up to make us believe that she could be I yeah it was just like a what speaking no. of one of those Goldie sees prescription medications in her desk drawer mm. how did that make you feel when you saw that I was like um okay that's a little suspicious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't know at that point what those prescriptions would have to do with Laura's death, but I was still thinking that's a little suspicious. And the fact, at least from what I remember, Goldie was a little bit surprised to find prescription drugs in yeah. the in the drawer which added Mm -hmm. added like did she really know her friend yeah so that comment that Adele makes to Goldie Mm -hmm. I can't understand why the police are calling her death suspicious haven't they heard the cliche doctors are the last people to seek help Mm. um she's basically trying to convince Goldie that Laura committed suicide, pretty much. There was more to meet that meets the eye, which had me as a viewer want to know more about Laura's life. Like, what else? What was she into? What was she hiding? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Adele saw Laura sneaking out late at night about a week before. Adele was in Denver at the opera, but she had a headache and decided to come home early. She says that Archie claimed he didn't even know Laura was there. So I can see here placing a little bit of blame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Also, anytime someone wants their lawyer present when they speak to the police, that's all it's like a dead giveaway that you're hiding something or that you're complicit or you yeah. know something you're an accessory to, like it just automatically makes you look guilty when at when they like they ask you a series of questions yeah you're answering them and then they ask you that one question you're like yeah i think i need my lawyer and it's yeah. like oh you think you're guilty like that's what uh-huh <laughs> that's what that means yeah Adele, she lived in Salt Lake before moving back to Elk Park. Her ex-husband was an entrepreneur and died in a fatal car crash. He drove off a cliff and his car was found by hikers. Um, Coincidence? Yikes. I, I, I think, think not. not. Hello. Hello. That was uh, the part that had her move up close to on my list. Personally. yeah 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 I was like okay if that happened and then the same thing happened to Laura 
Um, <laughs> yeah, like it's hello. There goes your your person right there. Mm-hmm. We also hear that she filed a divorce from her ex husband a couple months before the crash, but then she rescinded it. Mm. But they don't know why. This is just looking bleaker and bleaker for her. <laughs> she and Archie have a prenuptial agreement all the money from it would be a lot to lose and a perfect motive for him to keep Laura quiet Mm. so when we hear that that puts Archie on the list too yeah in a way in a way because I'm like wait could it be that a suspect like I was just yeah I I was dumbfounded I was like oh my gosh and then when he throws the glass I'm like um that was intense that and that was, was really some intense. expensive china as Goldie said <laughs> I mean that's the truth Ruth that is the truth that did look like some nice china yes this isn't related to Adele, but the next clue in Laura's death is that Detective Schultz and his team recovered chocolate covered shortbread from the front seat of Laura's car, which was made by none other than Goldie. So what do you think that means? Like when they find the shortbread in her car? Um well that's a little suspicious I have to say that but I knew that Goldie wasn't the one who did it of course because she's the protagonist so yeah do you think we'll ever get a Hallmark mystery where throughout the whole series we have such an unreliable narrator and at like the final one she's the one committing all the crimes what how do you think you would feel if we were to have a mystery like that where our leading lady or the protagonist oh. was the one you know what I mean like yeah we're watching these series of movies and you know how in Francesca Quinn how each of the crimes that happened or I don't know if you've seen Francesca Quinn yet I did yeah okay each of the crimes were linked to like a bigger one so what if we had a series where each of the crimes were linked and you know, our leading lady is just minding her business in her whatever profession she's in, sleuthing or whatever. But at whatever whatever number they deem as the finale, whether it's five or six, mm-hmm. we now find that she was the one. Like this oh. whole time, it's almost like she was an unreliable narrator because we were built to trust her. But then maybe in three or four, we're just like, we see like little tiny glimpses of what we may think are character flaws, but it's actually, no, they're trying to show you that she's actually an unreliable narrator. How would that make you feel? I don't know. (laughs) Probably surprise. Plot twist. The plot twist of the century. I think it makes for good storytelling. Yeah, it does. But I don't know. I, I don't, I mean, it wouldn't be consistent with the mystery brand in the sense of how they construct their mysteries Mm -hmm. but I think if they just wanted to just do like a little flash in the pan and just do especially with um the the new direction that Hallmark is taking Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be that would be incredibly interesting yeah it would be interesting but definitely surprising and it's funny that they and I, I guess I got off on that because of the short like the shortbread being linked yeah. to the golden. Yeah. That just had me wondering, like, what if what if she really was connected in some way? You know, like what if yeah. she actually did it? You know? Yeah. I guess I always just try to see the good in people. <laughs> I mean, that's what Hallmark is for. We're, yes. we're, we're lovey dovey. We don't yeah. want our leading lady to be a serial yeah. killer. <laughs> How horrible is that? Oh my god. I I was just I think it would make for a really good story no I agree I'm just like (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. Okay, moving on. Julian Geddes is my second or third suspect. He is Adele's son from her first husband. Brad saw him the day of Laura's death. He was lurking around the school parking lot waiting for someone. But at that point, we don't know who he was waiting for. The spot he was pacing happened to be right in front of Laura's reserved parking spot. Creepy. Suspicious. Very creepy. Yeah. According to Detective Schultz, Dr. Gentle also saw Julian in the parking lot, and Laura sent an email to Julian inviting him there. I thought it was him. This is the one suspect. Julian, that yeah. You thought it was I Julian? Was, I grabbed onto the entire time. Yeah. That was, that was, that was the main one for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was pretty high on my list, too. At one point, she goes to Adele and Archie's home because she is catering her birthday party. And, you know, she's doing her scouting and taking pictures around the house. And she goes to the guest quarters where Julian lives. And she finds Laura's business card on the table. I'm telling you, higher and higher up the list. He, I'm telling you, he did it, and nobody could tell me otherwise. Because I mean, he's lurking in her parking spot. Mm -hmm. He, and then we, I don't know if you were going to say this, or forgive me if I'm jumping the gun, but yeah. him having her business card in the drawer does. I mean, so he was her patient. That's. I don't even know. I know she was the school counselor. So. Did he see her in the off times, like for additional support? It's possible. But then I know later on, Dr. Gentle mentions that Julian was his patient. Mm -hmm. So maybe the time with Laura was just like extra it's like why have her card that's really weird yeah and speaking of Julian's relationship with Laura according to Dr. Gentle he developed an unhealthy fixation or mm. obsessive attraction to Laura kind of mm. creepy it's just creepy like julian just gives creep all around so <laughs> goldie and owen find water hemlock in his kitchen drawer and we can talk more about the scene later because yes we'll be jumping ahead yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. but right then i was like it's julian yes I'm telling you, he was high on my list. He was, it was him and then Archie. They were one and two respectively. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One clue now that I'm thinking back that confused me a little bit was when there was an intruder in Laura's house and Goldie was there. Like what was mm -hmm. the suspect looking for mm. and did we need to know that or was it was it a good just, scene it was but i'm wondering you know if that was just to throw us off the set it could be mm -hmm. and for a second the first time i watched this movie when they showed goldie looking through the clothes in the closet and we could see the person walking by it kind of looked like Richard for a second mm. 
but maybe that's just me I didn't I didn't I didn't think that I was just like and much like you I'm like okay they're they're trying to throw us off the scent but what is the purpose of being in her house yeah and this was also the scene where we see the first kind of embers between Uh Goldie and Detective Tom (laughs) yeah and we can talk about that a little bit later because I loved that moment Mm -hmm. I have Richard on the list of suspects he is Goldie's ex-husband towards the end of the luncheon Marla was taking out the trash and saw him and Laura arguing Marla doesn't know what it was about because she was too far away to hear. And I believe that scene when we see Richard talking to Laura was before the one when Goldie was in Laura's house. So maybe that's why I thought it was Richard. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Because of that one clip. Yeah. Yeah. Now that dude, Lachlan Monroe, he is a tried and true love him he love is him. a great actor yes and i think he paired perfectly funny enough i'm not i don't like divorce but oddly yeah. i felt like it worked with like with nikki's character and mm-hmm. their dynamic yeah i couldn't see them married but i could definitely see them divorced which is hilarious <laughs> i thought they yeah. had a really good dynamic yeah as like co-parents for her daughter and her daughter was a little sugar cookie she was so sweet I agree I wish we got more scenes with her I agree I agree later on we see Goldie go talk to Richard and he tells her that he wasn't fighting with Laura he was just passionately conveying an opinion (laughs) and concerned about all the rumors and gossip about her and Archie And how that might impact the wellness center. Yeah. What did you, did you feel like there was a possibility he could have done it? Like, did you I thought it was possible. Yeah. But then, you know, in the majority of these Hallmark mystery movies, they keep you guessing and you don't actually know who it really is until the end. So yes I because you know they present us with a lot of suspects but yeah. we really only grab on to, to a like few. to a few so that I was wondering if yeah. was he one of the ones you grabbed on to yeah we also hear from Richard that Laura received a call from a patient at around 4 p.m so that is why he didn't get a chance to talk to her yes as long yes, as he indeed. wanted to. Now he's a doctor as well, because he's a yes. surgeon. Surgeon, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Brad Bowman. Now the only thing I have down for him is that he had proposed to Laura, but she turned him down. If that is a motive. That is definitely motive. A, 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 what is it a crime of passion I think is what they call it <laughs> yeah yeah so he is Laura's ex so which definitely motive right there this was one where because Antonio was playing Brad I just I was like I there's was no like, way it's him I literally like who's Brad I was like no Antonio <laughs> I was like who's Brad he's Antonio no but I I really did. I was getting, I got nervous. Yeah. Because I was like, no, he's actually like a, a legitimate suspect here. Yeah. Oh, no. I was like, no, it can't be him. Cannot be Brad. The fact that he's even a legitimate suspect had me worried. Yeah. I said, no. Yeah. Julian was the one that called Laura around 4 p.m. And they just talked for a minute. But then nine minutes later, Laura gets another call that lasts for 30 minutes until she drove off the cliff. 
Who's talking for 30 minutes? Who could she be talking to for 30 minutes? Why are we talking? For th- That's an invested conversation right there. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we find out from Tom that mm-hmm. the crash is not what killed Laura. She was poisoned by water hemlock, which we mentioned a few minutes ago. So It's too specific yeah almost like, like two plants it's it yeah. was oof. yeah yeah i've heard of hemlock and i know that that's a poisonous plant yikes i only know of hemlock it was the name of a wordpress template i used to use on a blog <laughs> oh my god <sighs> oh. hemlock takes 30 minutes to take effect and since Laura was on the phone with someone for 30 minutes, mm-hmm. they come to the conclusion that the killer was probably the one on the phone with her to make sure that she died, which is horrible. But you know, Nicole, that brings us back to her having a shortbread. Yes, it because does. Because the, the hemlock could have been in the shortbread. Yeah. So but that, that kind suspect. of makes more sense. That line from Tom after he looks at her and he says something along the lines of, you know, you helping me with this investigation mm-hmm. and planting the hemlock. And Goldie was like, no. Like, why would I do that? Why would, why would I, I help one? you? Exactly. Why would I help you? If I'm the killer. Yeah. So you can catch me. <laughs> like, well, I'm going to help you catch me. <laughs> Marla McGuire. She is another one of Goldie's friends. Goldie found her in the kitchen alone with the shortbread, which to me sounds a little suspicious. I would say so. I would say so. She is also the one who told Goldie about Laura and Brad. Because mm-hmm. she has her ear to the streets. She knows stuff. Mm-hmm. Jumping forward a little bit, Tom and Goldie search Adele's desk and find the prescription medications again. One is for seizures and another one is for anxiety. And it appears that Julian has not taken them in months. Which... You see why he stayed up there high on the, like he mm-hmm. could be off, he's off his meds. Yeah. So that means he's liable to do something. Yeah. Another clue that makes Adele suspicious is the note that she leaves Laura or has written for Laura. It says, stay away from my husband or I will end things for you here. Hmm. I mean, she thinks Laura's having an affair with her husband, so... Yeah, that's motive. That is anything. Yeah. The last suspect... You know what I'm going to say? Dr. Owen Gentle. (sighs) Hypnotherapist. (sighs) Going back to the scene at the end, Mm-hmm. with him and Goldie in Julian's living quarters. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Julian that put them there. or It wasn't no. Julian that planted the hemlock there. It was Owen. Now that took me by surprise. I did too. I was like, okay now. I was like, what? Why? Because then Goldie find that in the drawer and then who comes into the room and catches her in the drawer yeah that's when I knew oh okay so he did it (laughs) that was when it was solidified I was like yeah okay he did it but I didn't understand why I was like why did he do it well what did he have against Laura 
that's something that I'm still wrestling with. I don't understand, because I think what he presented when he was doing his big confession <laughs> was that he didn't want her to infiltrate or mess up their doctor's group. Like they had, it was him, uh, Goldie's ex-husband, Richard, mm -hmm, Richard, and then it may have been one other person. I don't know, but they had like, I think they were going into business or they were embarking on a venture together. The wellness like center. The wellness center. And I felt like he either didn't want her to mess it up or wanted her out of the group. One of the one of the two. I don't remember yeah. specifically. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why? I I yeah. just I just still didn't know why. Yeah. So he was trying to frame Julian by planting the hemlock there. Horrible. Framing a well, he I can't say a child, but like framing a, a someone so much younger than you yeah. has so much life ahead of him. Not right at all. Not cool. With, he was successful because I did think it was him. So I guess he was, yeah. <laughs> he was good with that. <laughs> yeah. And going back to, you know, him claiming he was trying to help people with the wellness center. We see a clip of Owen talking about the hypnotherapy he uses for his patients to treat serious addiction modify behavior and help break through limitations in their thinking. After that, we see a clip of him talking to Archie and saying, what if Julian was the inspiration to build a wellness center? The third clip is Owen talking to Julian and saying, Julian, tell your mother that the wellness center is a wonderful investment and to give Archie the money. In this scene, you know, we see Julian's eyes get big. So he figured out what Owen was trying to do and mm. told Laura about it. So <sighs> and just, yeah. Owen is the one that sent the email from Laura's work computer to Julian. Which is so suspect. Which tipped Laura off. Like, it's so <laughs> suspect. Why would you even do that? Yeah, like. Wow. Yeah, Laura, after she figured out what he was doing from Julian, she made a complaint to the state medical board and Colorado has strict laws against the misuse of hypnotherapy, which will probably cause him to lose his license. Yeah, hypnotherapy is weird. It's just like, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't mess with that. Mm -mm. Yeah. And, you know, to wrap it up, we hear that Julian installed hidden security cameras in the guest quarters. I was cheering. Yeah. I was, because I'm like, got him. <laughs> yeah. So he has an alibi. Yes. And he's yes. been with Mason. Yes. I was like, yes, 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 yes. So Owen is the killer. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Do we want to talk about some of our favorite moments before we get Let's into trivia? It. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so the first one I have is pretty brief, but it's the first scene with Goldie talking to Olive and, you know, they're talking about the biscuits for the school field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was funny. And Goldie's like, Greer is an alpine cheese. Listen, you got to know your cheese. And yeah. she's a caterer, so she, she knows what's up. Yeah. I also have to mention the montage that we see at the beginning when she's setting up for the luncheon. Oh. Those things they had sitting out, like all the food looked really good. Yeah, I made a mistake of not eating while watching this. So any food related <laughs> mystery coming forward, I know now I need to eat while yeah. I'm watching it because it's gonna make me hungry. Yeah. Goldie's first conversation with Laura and 
Goldie saying how she wouldn't have the job if it wasn't for Laura suggesting her to Adele. Mm -hmm. Then they start talking about Brad and Laura's like, has he asked you out yet? Right. (laughs) Which I love Goldie and Brad. That was, those were some of my favorite moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love how Goldie's like, did you come in here and make me go on a date? Like, what is your purpose? Like, if you, like, you're not even here to help me. You're just here to, 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 uh, what's the, like, pick on me when it comes to that. Also, I love how Brad interrupted and Laura says, hi, Brad. It's funny. We were just talking about, and Goldie says, I thought when people were going to arrive. Yes. Yes. She was trying to say that. She didn't know what Laura, um, yeah, what Laura was going to say. So listen. I loved how understanding Brad was with Goldie about yes. the date because yes. of her being divorced. I thought that was really sweet. I really hope that he's um, a recurring character yes. in this series. Yeah. And that, because just the, the gentleness, the kindness, the mm-hmm. care, yeah. even though he was a suspect, like he was on the side of this one. Yeah. But like, you can tell that there's a genuine, like he genuinely cares about her. Yeah. And I think they had beautiful chemistry as soft they and did. small as it was. Yeah. So I was, I'm hoping for a triangle situation, much like Murder, She Baked. Yeah. between her brad and detective tom schultz oh I goodness see, because they, like literally brad and tom are on two set two ends of the spectrum yeah. i feel like brad is yin and tom is yang and he's just like oh, like he's supercharged angry yeah and like sharp and stuff so mm-hmm. i would love to see i would love to see that yeah that would be nice but another love triangle it's going to be nice and stressful and crazy and frustrating, but beautiful all at the same time. It's going to be worth it, whoever yeah. she ends up with. Yeah. yeah, but I'm sure they could get it right. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. if John Christian Plummer continues to write these. JCP, as Jax puts it, JCP. <laughs> yeah. This was a funny moment I have written down, but Goldie coming in to see Marla eating the shortbread cookies. I feel like we could all relate to that. <laughs> I don't have written down what she said, but I think it was something along the lines of she was like mimicking what she was imagining the shortbread cookie would be saying. Like, Marla, Marla, come eat me. Man. <laughs> Another funny line I have written down is when Tom is at Goldie's house for the first time and He's looking yes. around and Goldie says, would you like me to give you a tour of my house? And he's yes. like, no, I'm fine. Because <laughs> literally he's like Snoopy the dog snooping around and she's just like, well, excuse me, like you can't just come in. I mean, you're a detective, but that doesn't give you right to just come in here and be about my house. Like, you know me. Oh, I love that yeah. scene. That was beautiful. Yeah. The banter between Andrew and Nikki in this next scene is hilarious it's when goldie is leaving adele's house after getting her check for the luncheon and tom is like what are you doing here and goldie says getting paid for yesterday and tom says oh yeah really goldie no seriously look see tom so you're telling me you didn't come here because of what you told me you saw her doing I will tell you that, and I will tell you more, just not here. Fine, follow me. (laughs) I loved it. Oh, I love it. I love them. They just, again, I'm grateful we get to see them in another light, like where they can, they can act like this with each other. Yes. Tom and Goldie's conversation in his office, she says, you got to stop calling me Miss Barry. It's Goldie. Okay, Goldie. <laughs> and then Mason interrupts and he's like, am I interrupting? And Goldie says no, while Tom is saying yes. <laughs> I love when that happens. 
<laughs> and Goldie says, call me if you need more help. Good to see you, Mason. And Mason says, more help with what? Tom, this case. And Mason says, oh, well, she is very helpful. I mean, he called it like he said it. He, he yeah. saw it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Going back to that scene we mentioned earlier that she really loved. When they are at Laura's home, I believe. And she says, you gonna arrest me? And he says, don't tempt me. <laughs> yes! The eyes, the tension. You yes. can cut it with a knife. Oh my gosh. That might be one of my favorite scenes in this movie. Like, top favorite scenes. Woo! Yeah. Loved it. This was a funny moment, and it was when Marla was at Goldie's house, and I believe they had just had dinner. And then Tom shows up and Marla says, Goldie, you gonna introduce me? Like Marla was very, I was shocked at how for it, like to me, she came up very forward yeah. with her attraction to Detective Tom, even though she wanted her friend to be with him. I'm yeah. thinking, but we could clearly see that you're feeling him some type of way. <laughs> yes. I also love how when Tom leaves, Marla is asking Goldie, um, when were you going to tell me about this cute detective that has a little crush on you? It's like, how could we tell? Because you obviously like him, ma'am. Yeah. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> and Goldie's just like trying to backtrack. And she says, he does not. I'm helping him with something. Right. I love when Goldie asked Tom if he could basically come along on her date with Brad at the beach. <laughs> because she thinks he's a suspect. Yeah. And then Tom invites Mason. Can we just say Mason's an unsung hero throughout this entire I love movie. Mason. Mason was great. And the dynamic he had with Andrew. Her perfection. Riley and Andrew's perfection. dynamic was great. Yes. Totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. He had some of the best comedic lines in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of funny lines, when Tom, Goldie, and Mason are at the station and they're talking about Adele and Archie and Julian being possible suspects after hearing the voice recording that Goldie took. Mason says, sorry, I get excited. I've never been part of a homicide investigation. <laughs> <laughs> he was just so excited to be in the field, you know? Yeah. He's a rookie. I felt that, like, green energy from him yeah. just being so new to the forest. I so enjoyed it. Yes. And it continues after Goldie asked Tom if he could be her plus one for Adele's birthday party. Mm -hmm. And Mason says, could he do this? <laughs> yeah. Like, is that possible? Uh, and it continues no. more when Goldie leaves and they're talking about her being divorced. Mason says, she's divorced. That's why she said it like that. And Tom says, I know. Man. Just a few more I have on my list. The first one is Tom checking in on Goldie and mm -hmm. their conversation at her home when she says, mm -hmm. I'm doing my impression of you. <laughs> that look as he's like walking behind. He was just, again, hats off to Andrew for just how he played that yeah. role. That was just yeah. fantastic. Yes. Tom and Goldie at the birthday party and complimenting each other on how good they are at their jobs and Tom yes. telling her why he is in Elk Park. Yeah. Again, we got some soft spark moments. Yep. Mm -hmm. Of course, I got to mention the chase scene. Very suspenseful. <laughs> the yes. camera work, they did a great job with that. Yes. And I saw their stories. All I could think about was 
working at the night shift. <laughs> Because I remember that when they yeah. were just singing that during that song, during that, when they were shooting that scene. So I, I definitely was in it. And I definitely think it was suspenseful, but I definitely had that in the back of my mind. As yeah. Well. <laughs> I love that Instagram story. That was priceless. Yes. Yes, indeed. Of course, the acting, like it was in the whole movie, was great. And the hug. Yes. I felt that hug. That was yeah. sweet. Yes, indeed. Totally agree on all cylinders. Yes. Goldie and Mason's conversation at the very end and Tom showing up. Goldie says, well, I tackled him. Mason, you're like the coolest person I know. And that even <laughs> includes Detective Schultz. And he's like right behind. And Goldie's like, Mason, <laughs> I'm going to head to the station. I love that, it. Yeah. And I that love line, it. I love it. Yes. When Goldie says, thank you, Tom says, I'm just doing my job. Goldie says, well, thank you for doing it so well. Soft spark number three. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was sweet. Yes. We have some trivia for the Hallmarkies and Sleuthers to wrap up this episode. See how I can stump Dara. I don't think it'll be hard. I was just putting it out there. <sighs> All right, let's. I'm gonna close my eyes so I can okay. lock back in. What color are the flowers we see on the front desk of Elk Park Counseling when Goldie arrives? Now this is not fair. <laughs> when she goes and is searching Laura's office, I'll give some okay. choices. Okay, pink. Orange, mm -hmm. yellow, mm -hmm. or purple. What before you even said the choices, what came to my mind was orange. So I'm gonna go orange. Nah. Dang it. What was it? I'm trying to give you a clue without giving it away. Purple. Nah. Okay. You know I'm just gonna go down. <laughs> it's a color in this picture frame that I mentioned. Pink. Ding, 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 ding. Look at me go. <laughs> what was the name of Adele's ex-husband? Robert, Mark, Vincent, or Tyler? It wasn't Tyler. Mm -mm. I think it was either Robert or Mark. Nah. So I'm going to wait. Wait, wait to both of them? Yeah. Well, then that leaves um, Vincent. Vincent. <laughs> there we go. Eight. Zero out of four. I told you I'm doing horrible. Like, why did you have faith in me, Nicole? <laughs> what is the zip code of Laura's home on her mailbox? Two, three, four, five, seven. Two three seven eight two, two three eight nine two, two three six four eight. C. Nah. D. Nah. A. Nah. Which leaves B. Two three seven eight two. I was just leading up to that, like it was just the progression. You know what I mean? Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> But that's something that's super specific. I don't know who will remember that. Oh my goodness. You're not playing fair, Nicole. <laughs> and I want to put it in an appeal. <laughs> appeal denied. Oh, dang it. <laughs> dang it. Maybe when I come on your podcast next. I'm going to we can do trivia. Podcast, I'm doing. Tri oh, I'm, I'm getting you back. Oh, I'm getting you back. Oh, I'm going to get you back. <laughs> For sure. Maybe you can get this question. Maybe uh oh, I'll pray. Where did Brad meet Laura on the ski trip? Aspen, mm. Colorado, Vail, Colorado, Bend, Oregon, or Jackson, Wyoming? I'm gonna say Vail, Colorado for two hundred. Nah. Jackson, Wyoming. Nah. 
Aspen? Yes. Ding, 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 ding. <sighs> These people are rich and I can't deal. <laughs> I can't deal. Well, you did a great job anyway, even though you got No, I did it. <laughs> I didn't say it. I did horribly. <laughs> this was the worst trivia in history. I got everyone in Swing My Heart history. I don't think anyone will, will I've made history here on Swing My Heart podcast. This is crazy. Uh, <laughs> but thank you uh, for uh, allowing me to recap yes. this mystery with you. It's been a pleasure. Yes, this was so much fun. Thank you for coming on to recap this awesome movie. Absolutely. I look forward to many more, my friend. Yes, and this is actually our first mystery we covered on the podcast. Yes. It was awesome to do it with you, Dar. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad that I could be, again, a part of a, another Swing My Heart podcast history on the good side. <laughs> yes. This is your first mystery. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. And the first time you were on, it was for the Winter Palace on GAC. Yes. Yes, indeed. Family. Yes, it was. Now Great American Family. Yes, it was. Yes. All right, Hallmarkies and Sleuthers. I think that wraps up our recap of Dying for Chocolate, a curious caterer mystery. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world. And we will see you next time. We love y'all. Bye. Bye.